It's time for some rock and roll. And yes, I am still a CD man. I still like collecting albums just like that. You see it right there before you. Slipknot, the end so far. And I have been a massive Slipknot fan uh, from the early days. Uh, it was, in fact, uh, when I got into them was a recommendation back in a chat room back in the old days of the internet. Uh, I was in high school and I remember somebody from the U.S. that I used to chat with about music to. He told me, have you heard of this band Slipknot? And I had said no. And he had shown me a couple pictures, said they are awesome. They're going to be breakthrough. They're having a debut record coming out on Roadrunner Records right away. So, of course, being me at the time, I went down and uh, got the album right after the release. So the self-titled album I went and got, I've actually got both versions of self-titled album for anybody who doesn't know. Uh, Slipknot was made to uh, remove a couple of the songs from the original version of their self-titled album and replace them with a couple of other tracks uh, because they had used some copyright material at the time uh, within, I think it was Frail Limb Nursery and Purity. Uh, so that brings us to the seventh studio album, the release, the end so far. And again, talk about dividing people. I talked about in a movie review, people being divided or not liking something. Man, this album is obviously going to split the maggots completely. I'm talking, this is not what you would necessarily expect if you're an average Slipknot fan and don't understand the experimental nature of what they do in each of their albums. They're not just a heavy grinding metal band every single time. This is a nine piece outfit that really go into it instrumentally to give you something different, a different experience and give you a different voice per each one of the albums that they have produced. Now, is it their strongest album? That is a good question. No, it is not. It is far from their strongest album. And I'm not saying that that means that it, it is a bad album by any means. I don't hate this album. In fact, I really personally enjoy this album. But it is a far cry from what I'm sure most people expect when turning this thing on. Especially when you first load it up and the very first track on the album, Adderall, is probably one of the slowest, most melodic tracks that Slipknot has ever produced. Very very slow and very melodic and very brooding but when you hear the way that it arranges and pulls into track number two the dying song time to sing it starts to make a lot of sense lyrically musically they pull together in such beautiful harmony that it becomes very very strong uh, from there we we hammer out the chapel town rag a song that the band released almost a, over a year, I believe, prior to this album coming out, and they've been playing it in a live setting. And I think that a lot of fans heard the Chapel Town Rag and immediately assumed, damn, this album's going to be thunderous. It's going to be hard-hitting. It's going to be in-your-face mel melting metal. No. Chapel Town Rag, by far, is probably the heaviest song outside of Hive Mind. I would say two of the heaviest tracks on there. There are a couple others. I believe uh, H377 is also a very brooding hard track but from there most of the album becomes catchy rock almost like you know a borderline older school metal like i know that there's a lot of influences from black sabbath on this one because the boys and slipknot very big black sabbath fans and they've stated before that they kind of want to go in the direction of playing more of a metal that they can get Corey taylor in there singing more as opposed to bringing in the growling heavy vocals i mean these guys aren't young anymore i mean i could only imagine the strain that it does to Corey taylor each and every night when he's got to go out there with that growling type sound that he brings to the table it is not an easy thing to do and in fact anybody who's ever taken a lesson in vocals and stuff like that I'm not saying that I, i'm good vocally but they say to sing from the diaphragm because when you do that and you bring it from the throat it tends to scratch the vocal cords it can really do damage over time to what you do and even coming from the diaphragm you'll find that you still at times you start to get very raw in the throat area and it really does its harm over the over time so again i gotta i gotta say that i have a feeling the end so far has a lot of meaning towards this is Pretty much the, well, first of all, it's the end of their run on Roadrunner Records. This is the last album that the band owed to Roadrunner Records. So moving forward, they sound like they're going to go independently and do their own thing, which allows them to experiment more musically and decide what direction they want the band to go without the influence of a record company telling them where they should go with this whole thing. I think it's also saying what you know of Slipknot is not 
necessarily going to be the same moving forward. So thank you to everyone who's followed us to this point. But we're going to do our thing. And if you don't like it, we apologize. But we're going to do what makes us happy and what we want to do moving forward because we've done what's been expected to us uh, of us up to this point. Uh, a couple of other things to mention on this one. Uh, songs like Yen, which has been playing on uh, rec uh, radio stations. Octane plays the hell out of this song. It's a wonderful song. Very catchy, dark, disturbing. Very big hit for the band. I really love the song Medicine for the Dead. Now, this one is a very, it, it, it's kind of slower rock in a way, sense, but it's very catchy or hooky. And anyone who knows about writing a hook musically, the hook is what studios want you to write when you're trying to produce something to put on the radio. A hook is that that piece that grabs somebody and they're like, oh shit, I remember that song because of that. And that's exactly what Medicine for the Dead is. You listen to this track and it is very dark and haunting because it's very much about Corey Taylor's uh, battles with uh, depression and anxiety and all the drugs that he's been given that have been used as a safety blanket, as something to cover up his uh, depression and never facing it head on and dealing with it head on, which a lot of people go through and a lot of people have to deal with in life. And he's now saying he wants to battle it. He wants to fight it without the drugs and everything to numb him and to make him forget about it. He wants to face this thing head on and decide from there how to handle himself. Um, yeah. So it, it, this album ends off too, again, with another very haunting melodic track called finale and finale is, very, very interesting, unique track to end this thing off. It's almost like it blends very perfectly with the very first track on the album at the same time. Uh, so these two feed into each other very well. A very nice, slow opening with a nice, haunting, uh, slow exit from this particular CD. Uh, where do I put it in the scope of Slipknot albums? I mean, this is very... This is very tricky because, I mean, personally, a lot of people are making the references to Volume 3, the subliminal verses, which I'm a massive fan of that album. I think it is commercially one of the best band, uh, albums the band has ever produced. But coming off of the last album, We Are Not Your Kind, this isn't quite the experimental dark heaviness that we got with We Are Not Your Kind. This is more of the let's see where we can take this thing and some parts of it almost reminiscent of things that you hear from Corey Taylor's other group Stone Sour you know as well so you know where does it sit in the vein of it um you know it's it's hard to rank their albums I mean they've got such great great stuff uh you know Iowa obviously a very hard-hitting album for people who love that as well too it definitely ranks lower but I'm not saying that that's a bad thing for the band it's just that when compared to some of the brilliant excellence that they have given us over the years it is really tough to say and we got Carl I feel the album was a mix of singles Corey and Stone Sour with Slipknot drum toes very much so and I, I agree with you and again I'm not being negative about that there is nothing wrong with going in that direction Corey is a phenomenal singer and the arrangements that's the thing too is like sit down and listen to this album front to back a few times with headphones on and just relax to it and start to realize the musical arrangements all the different pieces that come together in perfect harmony throughout this album there is some absolute brilliance that you know, maybe the average listener won't catch on to, but if you take the time to really sit down and appreciate what the band was trying to say and do, it really comes together. It gives you a really awesome piece of art at the same time. I say this is almost, it's a bit of a roller coaster and that's okay because this tells a story. This is very much almost telling a story about what it's like to battle anxiety and depression from start to finish. You know, sometimes it's, it, it's, Slow, you have those days where you just you're not quite yourself then you have those times where you're fired up you're geared up you're ready to go and then you know hey things are getting better oh no they got dark and scary it's it's back and forth back and forth but you can tell centrically that this is all about ba those battles within yourself with the depression with anxiety and how to battle them and get through them and at the end of the day hopefully be able to come out the other side still wanting to be around and still wanting to be there which again is a vocal point in the song finale where talking about still wanting to be here because i love this place uh carl saying Corey is one of my favorite voices for sure i did just that and listened with headphones last night awesome carl so did i my man after getting back from the movies i definitely sat down and listened to this thing a few things times through and again 
I love this album. And Carl, you'll know we, uh, we do beats and beat downs together and we're going to have season two coming up here very soon. So we're both big fans of bands like this. And Corey Taylor is just, yeah, vocally, he is absolute perfection. And outside of, I'd say, I wasn't a big fan of his recent solo album. There's a few tracks on there I like, but almost all the time, other than that one album, I really love what Corey Taylor brings to the table, whether it be in Slipknot, Stone Sour, or often by himself as well, too. And some of his live performance where he's playing acoustically and he's doing some of these things are absolute brilliance. I mean, the man knows what he's doing. He handles himself brilliantly. So I got to ask, I, I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10. Again, I would give most Slipknot albums 9 or 10 out of 10 because I think they're perfect from front to back. This one, that you know, I mean, you have to be in the right mood. If you're in a rock mood, you're in a get up and party and heavy mood, you're not going to want to sit down with this one. But if you want to sit down and enjoy a beautiful musical arrangement with some very catchy songs that show progression of a band that has been around since the late 1990s, then this is definitely worth the time and investment into this music. I really love this. 8 out of 10, I'm going to give it. I know, Carl, you're sitting right there. I want to know from you too. What did you think overall of this album? Where would you rank it? What would you give it out of 10? Because I'm very curious to get your thoughts on that as well. But again, that is it right there. Slipknot, the end so far. And I mean, this cover art is beautiful, as always, from Slipknot. They always got some very interesting stuff that they produce. I, 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 I highly recommend it. If you're someone who likes a wide variety of music like I do, whether it be uh, metal, rock, I mean, it, it, it's a great blend. It's something that is a little bit more accessible to the average music listener as well, too. Some people might not care for the heavy, hard-hitting version of Slipknot, but if that's the case, this one opens up the world of Slipknot to a whole new basis of music lovers, too, and that now can come in and appreciate the band, not only for Corey's brilliant uh the vocal work, but also for the incredible musicianship that you get from all members of Slipknot. Even like this has got to feature some of the best work from DJ Sid Wilson and also Craig's uh, sampling on this. It's just blended in so brilliantly that you almost at first listen miss it. But then when you're listening carefully, damn, there is some really cool pieces that are just blended perfectly in with the guitars, the bass, the drums, as they all come together as one massive collective. The end so far, an 8 out of 10 from yours truly, Bobby Munson. And before I go, Carl, if you're still there, make sure to let me know what you thought of the album. Uh, but I'm just going to mention that, hey, Rogue Affiliate, as you see down at the bottom of your screen, are a supporter of OLE Podcast and also, of course, myself. And uh, I'll get back to them in a minute because no, this is from Carl. I give the album 7.5 out of 10. While it hit the slipknot of days gone by, it seemed just a bit off to me while still feeling emotionally rounded and ending to sound great. Perfectly said, Carl. And I mean, we're pretty much on the same page. You're 7 out, 7.5 out of 10. I'm an 8 out of 10. I think we're kind of really in the same boat because, you know, great rock minds think alive, like their brother. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's it's good. Check it out. I think people should definitely, even if you were previously a Slipknot fan, give this one an opportunity. Support the band. I know that they're going to do miraculous things moving forward. And go see them live. Man, they are killer live. They put on a hell of a show. Uh, the wife and I went to go see them a few months back. And even she had never experienced Slipknot before. And she is high on that. Loves them now. And as you know, she loves this album. There are a lot of tracks there that she absolutely loves. And that's why I'm saying about being more accessible to the average person. Uh, so going back to the affiliate status, though, Rogue Affiliate, you'll see at the bottom of the screen and the QR code off to the side there as well, too. You can scan that QR code. It's going to take you right to the Rogue website. Rogue is Rogue Energy. It is a formula drink. It is an energy drink. It is an alternative to the drinks that you find in the supermarket. You can go and check out Rogue Energy if you want to be someone who's streaming, who's video gaming, and those late nights kick in. Hey, maybe you're somebody who does video editing and you're up to late hours of the night and, you know, the red bulls and the monster energy drinks you're like you know they're, they're they're playing a toll on the old ticker here well rogue energy's got the solution for that so that they can give you something that is sugar free that is vegan friendly uh gluten free they've got all of it for you so definitely scan that qr code down below check out rogue and go make your purchase today and if you're making that purchase remember ole pods is going to get you 10 percent off of your order when you go and check out our good friends at Rogue Energy. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. This has been fantastic to just kind of 
jump on in here and give a couple of reviews. I'm going to start doing this very frequently as I do watch a lot of different things, whether it be movies, television, music, all sorts of stuff that I experience. And when I experience it, I'm going to hop in here and I'm going to come in and talk to you guys and let you know my thoughts on things. I mean, there's so much stuff to watch coming up, I, especially it's October, so it's Halloween month, so it's going to be a whole lot of things, a lot of things to check out on the horror side of stuff. We know the movie Smile just opened. I want to check that out soon. Get you guys a review of that. We got Halloween Ends is coming up on October 14th, so that's going to be another great one to check out coming up here soon. I know Hocus Pocus 2 just dropped on Disney+, Plus. I'm looking forward to that. Check that out as well. So I'm going to have more of these reviews coming up. Uh, last night, you might have seen that I got uh, some gaming in. I'm going to be doing more gaming on the Twitch channel here as well too, so definitely check out some of my gaming uh, that I'm going to be doing. And uh, from there, you can also check me out tomorrow. It's going to be busted out with my good man, my brunch buster brother, Chris Parrish and I, and we're going to be joined by Drew Nicholas of Fightful Select, yes, or I think Fightful, uh, Fightful, anyway, I'm going to say Fightful, I'm sorry, I don't want to mix this up, but he's going to be joining us on Busting Out to talk about the week in professional wrestling, we're looking forward to that, so tune in tomorrow, Sunday, uh, on twitch.tv slash the chris parish you can also catch us on the video bros network on youtube live tomorrow as well as i believe on chris parish's twitter as well too so they're gonna be streaming live tomorrow for you guys check those out and also check me out on thursday nights with pop of smoke with ring respect radio and fusion but this thursday night joined by our very special guests lance and Hawaii. so i want to thank you all for tuning in to this very first episode of the bravado with bobby bobby munson i appreciate you taking your saturday morning to spend time with me. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you soon. Take care, everybody.